Today we're going to do a little bit of a blender physics experiment to see how accurately Blender's physics engine uh, replicates real world um, physics. All right, here's a video I saw the other day and I thought it was kind of interesting. Now I'm going to keep it muted just to try to avoid any copyright issues. I'm only going to pay, pay play a few seconds of it and I'm giving credit to this portion of the video to Steve Mould or whatever his name is. All right, now here's the deal. The golf ball or ball thrown into a cylinder at a downward angle, it will spin down, run along the inside edge of the cylinder, and then come out. And I believe it has to do a centripetal force and all that stuff. But I'm wondering if that translates to the blender physics engine and if it would duplicate that um, motion all right I got blender open I am using blender 3.6 I'm right, gonna go ahead and get rid of the cube just don't need the cube I'm gonna press 1 to go in the front side view and I am in orthographic view I'm gonna add a cylinder add mesh cylinder I'm going to keep it the same size for the most part just gonna make it a little bit longer add some more vertices so it runs more smoothly and has more geometry for the physics engine all right now i'm going to scale this on the z-axis scale z to enter that looks about right control a to apply the scale press tab to go into edit mode face select choose the top face delete delete face and then press tab to exit edit mode and i'm going to add some thickness to this Come over here to the modifiers, add modifier, solidify, and I'm going to solidify it going outward. All right, that looks that's about right. Click apply. All right, now let's add a ball. Well, first off, let me add some physics properties to this. Go to the physics tab, go to rigid body, set it to passive because we don't want it to move, and being that it is hollow. We're going to have to put it on mesh. All right, and surface response. We're going to set the friction to one. All right, now let's add a uh, ball. I'm going to go with a an icosphere. Now I'm going to make this icosphere a little bit smaller, but I'm going to add some more geometry to it at first. Go up to four, and that should be good enough. And grab Z, move it up here probably about right there and then scale bring it down to about that size that looks about right and then control a apply the scale rigid body it's going to be animated at first in order to get it th to throw I need to animate it and then turn the animation portion of it off um, all right I'm going to add a little bit more weight to it Instead of convex hole, I'm going to use sphere and set the friction to 1. All right. Now what I want to do, go to top side view, and I'm going to grab this on the x-axis, bring it to about right there. That's going to be my starting point on the throw. So I'm going to press I to set a keyframe, and then I'm going to go to about frame 10 and I'm going to actually I'm going to go back to frame 1 first off and I'm going to set a keyframe on that animation and then I'm going to go to frame 10 and then I'm going to press G for grab and bring it to about right there and then front side view grab it on the Z axis and bring it down here. Now, probably not quite that long. Grab Z about right there. Probably will work. And then add another keyframe. And then right here at frame five, I'm going to uncheck the animate it and keyframe it. That way, it's going to accelerate between frame one and five. And then once five gets here it unanimates and basically physics takes over all right so let's see what that looks like 
All right, let me look at it from side view. Play. It just doesn't look like it had enough speed. So instead of actually changing the speed of it, what I'm going to do is just change the speed of the animation because it, it in real in the physics engine it kind of um, emulates throwing it faster. So I'm going to set this to 0 0.5 and uh, we'll try that. <laughs> look at that it done almost the same thing not quite fast enough in order to leave but let's drop this down to 0.25 and it's basically dropped it down to 0.5 the physics is going to treat it as if it's moving twice as fast drop it down to 0.25 the physics is going to treat it as if it's moving four times as fast so let's try one more time this time it should leave the container Ain't that interesting? Uh, see, look at this one more time. Look at the motion on this. Goes in, hits, goes around and down, and then starts curving back up, and then exits. Now mine is going down a little bit faster, I believe. So let me change this to 0.35. Not much different. 0 0.4. 0.425. Now it's not going to be exactly like that guys, but it's close. But that, that just kind of trips me out. I don't understand how they can uh, program into Blender the physics. There's a lot, there's so much math involved that it trips my mind out that it actually works. But yeah, that's interesting. Anyway, I figured I'd share that and this kind of weird experiments I do every once in a while if I see something and I can translate it over into Blender. I just think stuff like this is interesting. That's about it. Later, people.